It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. And I'm Murray. And today we're going to be bringing you something special. This is something in-house we've called the Murray method, which is a technique Murray uses to undercoat his minis to save a whole bunch of time painting. We've done a lot of D&D tile painting videos, and this is an excellent backdrop to Murray's painting technique. Today's video is sponsored by Level Up Advanced 5th Edition, and they have allowed us to bring you more episodes of our awesome, fun, whimsical ragtag adventure over on Tabletop Time Roleplay. So while I go and be a forever DM and prepare all the materials for Murray to paint. I'll leave you in his capable hands to tell you all about his technique. So we're going to be painting a magical fantasy land in different tile sets in different areas. And as any good video game design will know, you want to feel like you're in different areas. You don't want it all to be the same color and be the same feel. So I'm really excited to try all these different techniques and colors and see what interesting environments we can come up with, with whatever Dave brings back with him. So where we left our party in our last ragtag episodes, we had just burst into a cavern, a chamber that a minotaur had come out of. So I needed some tiles that would represent a cavern and I found some on printablescenery.com that look pretty good. They're only $10 and you get a big set. So I think I'm going to grab these, print out a whole bunch of just random tiles and then uh, yeah, Murray can get to work on them and I can get to work setting up some monstrous encounters for this environment. <laughs> Murray, aerosol spraying has been around for quite a while if you hadn't noticed. What is so special about this way? Well, usually when we undercoat a model, we use one color, maybe a zenithal from the top. However, if we use lots of colors, we can get this really nice mottled realistic effect. And then that will be 80% of our painting done. All the shading and base coating is there. All you need to do is do some highlights to give the suggestion of some materials. and. You're done. Let's see how we can go about it. So as with any batch painting, you want to start with priming and I will start with Chaos Black so we can get some really nice dark shadows and then spray down in a zenithal manner with white so we get some really nice vibrant colors. So by starting with purple, we're gonna get that really cool sort of creepy up light reflection as it just bounces off everything. Gives it that really cool damp cavern that's a bit ominous. And we'll start doing the browns and the dirts sort of from the top and then we'll get a really cool atmosphere. So this will be the last spray to the cavern and then the rest will be dry brushing. And then to top it off, I'll make these caverns really lush and verdant by adding some moss hanging from the stalactites and then some ready-made basing mix on the ground. And as you can see from using the spraying technique, the spraying was 80% of the work and took 10 minutes. All up, this took me maybe three hours. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just reading Level Up, Advanced 5th Edition. One of three amazing books from our sponsor. Level up. If you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons or role-playing games in general, you absolutely must check out Level Up, especially if you've been a player for a long time. These standalone books can be used by themselves or alongside other 5e publications, and they offer a completely new way to play D&D. With an immense amount of character and class customization, it finally allows you to truly play characters and build them the way you would want to. There are completely revised rules 
animals that make some of the least playable classes in 5e amazing, like the ranger, and an amazing heritage, culture, and background system, which allows you to make such fun characters as gnomes who've been kidnapped by rampaging hordes of barbarians and grown up as such. It really allows you to form characters where the rules reflect their background that you've created for them in an awesome way. But it's not only tools for the players. With fully fleshed out exploration and travel rules, Level Up allows you to turn the more mundane parts of your adventure into a truly exciting and integral part of the journey. If you're interested in finding out more information, go to levelup5e.com. And if you'd like to get 10% off the core Level Up books, there is a link in the description. Just use the code TTTRPG and it'll be amazing support to both the channel and to Level Up. Thank you once again to Level Up 5e for allowing us to bring back Ragtag on our roleplay channel and sponsoring this video. All right, now back to the video with the second tile set. All right, we're back at the computer looking for some minis for a labyrinth. I've spent some time on my mini factory and I've come up with the King Minos's Labyrinth from Crippled God Foundry. This will serve as the heart of our adventure and this is quite a different environment to the cavern. So it'll be cool to see what Mari can do and how we can create two different feeling environments just with some spray paints. All right, it's not raining outside. Oh. We are go, quick, everyone on. Oh. Oh. Okay, so this is the plan. We're going to go with the fang. This will be our base coat and prime, mostly because we're running really low on black. This will give a nice brighter color as a base. And then I'm gonna zenithal with Corex white. So we get some really nice saturation of the colors that we put on top. Then over here, we have red and blue, two fairly vibrant colors, and they'll give us some really cool atmosphere, just like we did with the caverns. This will be our main color. We're gonna have a labyrinth, so we're gonna have it nice and sandy. Think very Egyptian pyramid. And then, these two colors, these will be our selective nuances, just sort of spattered here and there. All this combined should create a really cool smorgasbord of colors, tones, and just points of interest. And you might be asking, Mari, you've clearly thought all this through. You must have tried this on something. No, no. We're gonna find out what it looks like together. <laughs> time. take them all off to the side and give them a final dry brush all over with that same bone color. The spray went on really lightly, but we're going to be a bit heavier with our dry brushing. In fact, we're not even going to properly wipe all the paint off for our dry brushing. We're going to allow the paintbrush to streak down some of the tiles. This will give the appearance of sand cascading down these rock and, rock, rock and walls. And we'll also have the little hidden effect of hiding some of the more lateral print lines. Now with this little bit of extra texture and catching all the cool patterns that are on these wall sets, they're done. That's it, we're done. This took an hour, we got it done. And they look amazing, I'm really happy with them. So as I was developing my encounter, it became important that I needed a nice centerpiece encounter chamber that would join these two groups of open lock style tiles. I couldn't let Murray have all the fun with this video. So I snagged a few hours in between D&D prep, grabbed the hot knife cutter, hot knife cutter. It's designed to cut knives. Uh, it's hot and it's a blade that cuts other blades. It's like a progressive knife from Neon Genesis Evangelion that Asuka puts into the Ava and stabs the shit out of the angel. Yeah, it's pretty much that. Or a lightsaber. It's nothing like a lightsaber. <laughs> so I grabbed the hot foam cutting knife, went outside, put on my respirator and carved up some foam. Cutting the foam out into blocks, I used wooden skewers as a temporary fix to build up multiple layers. I needed height for this cavern. Yeah, the cavern. I haven't even told you what I'm building yet. So I'm gonna be building a cavern that joins the cave system with the labyrinth system. I'm thinking of cutting out some holes in the walls where we can place just one tile from each tile set. And then this is kind of a large cave that connects the two areas. In the center of the cave, I'm going to do a mound of dirt and then a big hole with light streaming in from the outside high above. I think this would be a really visually dynamic centerpiece and made even more so by the idea of putting a tree in the center of this little glade being fed by 
by water trickling between rocks and light streaming from above. I have plans to put a massive cyclops in here to have the party encounter. And I think just plonking this giant piece of scenery on the table is gonna be a really fun moment in our campaign. But as I said, I was stealing time to do this and I have to go back to continue prepping the encounter. So um, Mari, I've got some more stuff for you to paint. All right. <laughs> so with Dave's description of this conjoining cavern, I really like the idea of this little oasis of paradise in the middle. I wanted that to be really bright and colorful. So everything else we're going to take down a notch and make it a bit dirtier and grimier. So I'm gonna grab darker blues, greens and reds and just spray all those around the walls and make it really dark and mottled. And then we'll come in with more traditional grays that you'd use for rocks and just heavily dry brush those over. I'm gonna add moss, flock and tufts, just as I did for the caverns. Then I'm gonna mix some really bright green flock together and completely cover that little island in the middle. Now I need a tree. Luckily we have some pewter trees from Woodland Scenics that I think might be up to the challenge here. They're a more simple structure, but if I glue and twist them together, I can get a really interesting tree out of this. Now I wanna go really crazy with this tree and have some really bright popping color. So I'm going to add the flock to the ends of these branches and in a few stages, I will bulk up this foliage as much as I can. And there we have the completed halfway mark between these two tile sets. So this creepy Cyclops guy will be living within the labyrinth. So he's gonna be really intimidating. So we're gonna go for some blue and green bounce lights underneath to give him that sort of menacing, creepy, isolated vibe. And then we'll spray down from the top with some other colors and hopefully we'll get this really cool atmosphere. So this one is monster for the labyrinth. So I've done the base blue and red spray for her and I'm gonna kick it up a little bit and go for a yellow to give that nice monster fur feel. And then we'll tie it down with a bit more of a bone color. So Murray has done spraying these models for me and they look amazing. I really love the contrast between these really saturated shadows and these more muted colors on top. I think it creates a really dramatic look and it's pretty much what the Murray method's known for. So it's done a fantastic job on spraying these up for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these ready for our encounter. I'm just gonna do them the same way we did our D&D &D models before, just kind of pulling out some colors, keeping it sort of subtle so those saturated colors really show through. So sit back, relax and enjoy some mini miniature painting as we play some funky cool music. quick and simple process and I feel like anyone that's starting out painting this could really be a good tip for you. It brings in a lot of different colors that you're just able to paint on top of it and it really is a simple process. I really love the variants in these models so there was lots of options to choose from when it came to putting out textures or different colors on them.
Ooh, ah. Ooh, look at those pretty reveals. Ooh, look at those models they've painted. Excellent. I'd like to thank the patrons of this video, including but not limited to our newest patron, Kailito 20 c Your amazing patron support allows us to put out two videos a week and continue this tirade of nonsense. And also weekly patron content. So if you're interested in joining our patron exclusive Discord, joining part of our monthly mini review, or just supporting the channel, it would be a huge help if you could join our patron and support us. Murray! You've done a fantastic job. They look awesome. Thank it you. was done on an amazingly quick time budget. It was. It's a great way to paint a huge batch or an entire army. It's really quite cost effective and it allows for a lot. You can also do this manually just using brushes. You don't have to use an aerosol. So you can do a couple of single miniatures that way. But it's so quick with aerosols. And a massive thank you of course needs to be said to Level Up Advanced 5th Edition for sponsoring this video. Go check out the links in our description. Remember the code TTTRPG for 10% off the core books from Level Up. It really is a cool system reminiscent of older editions of D&D or Pathfinder. So thank you for watching and we'll be seeing you in the next video. It's been a great 